All right, everybody, I'm here to talk to you today about it, Mutsu in my NMA Ryu Gaiden Shura no Toki. So I'll put the name in the description and in the title because it's long, it's, it's crazy long. But uh, so this is my, it's tied for first for my favorite martial arts anime of all time. Like Air Master and this one is tied. So for me, like the list of martial arts animes that are like strictly martial arts that I can think of right now are Mutsu in May Ryu. Air Master, Baki, and Kenichi. I think Baki's pretty solid, like number two, number three. Kenichi's somewhere on the list. I liked it, but it had a lot of things I didn't enjoy about it. So this starts off with this art martial arts style called Mutsu in 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 May Ryu. God, I suck pronouncing these names. But it's like an undefeated bare hand martial art that has never been defeated. And the practitioners of it are usually one person and it gets passed down through their family line. So you follow three generations of Mutsus, that's what they call them. And in each generation, there's like one of the best swordsmen of the time period. Dang, I got like a bump right here. Somebody hit my head on the door or something. I don't know. But uh, so the first generation goes against uh, Musashi. And then the second one goes against Yagyu Jubei. Even though there's other like weapon practitioners at the time. The main ones that they focus on are the ones I'm breaking down. And then in the third generation, there's actually a bunch that he goes against. There's uh, Sakamoto, Ryoma, ok Okuta, Sosuke, um, Hijikata, Toshizo, I think. So, as you can tell, these are pretty big names. They usually show up in other animes and stuff like that, especially Musashi. He's like that legendary... when. A Westerner thinks of a swordsman, that was a samurai. It's probably Musashi. That's the one that people know. He's like the most popular one. But the and so I'm also gonna break down which Mutsu I think is the strongest. Which I believe you can make a strong case between him and Yakumo. I don't even think you can. I think it's pretty it's open to interpretation, but I really think Takato is like the strongest Mutsu, and he's the second generation, so he's the one that comes in between Izumi and Yakumo. So the, there's reasons why I think he is. It's mainly because I kind of just take the third generation out of the mix completely because I don't, like when you get to a third generation of Mutsus, I'm not gonna spoil anything that's like a big plot point and just kind of give you like a background of what's going on. The third generation is basically when swordsmanship's like dying out as like a, like a fighting form. Everybody's got guns now and they're actually becoming more efficient. That's another thing is the martial arts in this anime is like really, really well done. It's not like anything that's like, super exaggerated anything like that it's all pretty realistic and there are guns but you have to realize for the first two generations that these guns are so poorly made that it looks like they're kind of dodging them but they still almost get hit i think it's more that they're missing than they're actually getting hit by it and it's more that they're looking at where the guns pointed before the person shoots that's kind of how they predict it because that's how i rationalize something that happened in the third generation because this is the most like I think the most like strong, the most crazy feat that they have in the sh whole show to show you the realism. The most crazy thing that happens is uh, Izumi grabs a rifle. The dude's got the gun pointed at uh, somebody for like forever, and he jumps in front of the dude and catches like ricochets the bullet with like the guard of the rifle, which not real. That's probably the only thing that I would say is not realistic. But even then. Like, the dude was holding his gun there forever, so he could see where it was pointed, and, and like, apparently his eyesight's amazing. But jumping at the perfect time to catch the bullet is pretty unrealistic, definitely. Because there's no way he can tell when he's squeezing the trigger from that distance. But yeah, like, the martial arts is really well done. It's animated super good. There's no, like, still frames. So you see that a lot in today's animes. One anime that killed me on, Beelzebub. Oh my god. Any kind of like punch or anything would be a still frame punch. Like you see the fist and then you see the person get hit. I hate that. I like it when it's like that fluid animation. You can see what's going on the whole time. They're moving around. That's the kind of animation I like. Definitely in a martial arts anime or any kind of fighting anime where like movement is very important. This does it really well. Another thing is the reason why I, I got sidetracked. The reason, another reason why I think Takato is the strongest, and it only can be put up to, I think, Yakimo and Takato. Yakimo is the first generation, Takato is the second generation. Is that their two swordsmen at the time were like, I think, by far stronger than any of the swordsmen in the third generation. You can make the argument for Okuta, 
But as you know, if you watch anime and you know anything about Okita, he gets sick. That's that's something that happens. Um, so that's one thing. But that kind of just takes the third generation guy out, out the bat, even though he has that crazy feat of catching the bullet with the rifle. And the reason why I think Takato is stronger than Yakumo is basically by how their fights go. Between, because I consider Jubei and Musashi either extremely close to equal, or I put Yagyu probably stronger from what he does in anime. But the thing is, like, this is something that, like, it's kind of realistic because when there's been someone that's considered the, like, all time best, when you're in a ge different generation, you talk about the first guy that was the all time best at the sport. Like, when people are bringing up swordsmen later on in the anime, they're like, oh, he fought Miyamoto, Miyamoto Musashi. Not like, oh, he fought Yagi Jubei. Because Miyamoto is the one that was like considered the all-time best of his generation. And it's just so good. And everybody in Yagi Jubei's generation knows Yagi Jubei's best. That's met him anyways. Even though there's like... The thing about the second generation is that this is when I think the swordsmanship was kind of at its peak and that's another reason why i think takato is stronger than yakimo is that there's all these styles that are coming up and you get to see a lot of them and this is kind of when swordsmanship was like actually considered like people were starting to like revolutionize how you could be proficient at it people were using different art styles some of them were just using different like uh looks at how they could fight and stuff like that and Yakimo's generation, it's Musashi. And Musashi is the strongest. And the reason why, a part of the reason Musashi is the strongest is because he doesn't like listen to the train of thought that we have to do swordsmanship a certain way. Seeing Jubei's generation, everybody's thinking like that. And Musashi's generation, he is the only one that's thinking like that. Not taking anything from Musashi, but that, I just feel like swordsmanship during Takato's generation was so much stronger. And, every, and Iori... Uh, Mi uh, what is Musashi? Miyamoto, who's also trained by Musashi, saw both fights, and he's like, he's not just undefeated; he's a beast. Like he is a monster. Like Takato is, anyways. And uh, Izumi is just out of the conversation because during his arc, that's when swordsmanship's starting to die. Everybody's starting to rely on guns, and that's like a big thing of his arc is that like everybody's becoming westernized. Like that's a big part of it. And because that's the Shinsengumi, if you know history, it's like all during that part. One thing I would say, though, I think Yakumo's personality probably fits the Mutsu style more. And I like him maybe the most out of all of them. Because he takes, he's very aloof, but he's very smart. Like people, <laughs> it's funny because he's probably the smartest Mutsu. And people call him a fool, they call him an idiot. But it's just that he understands things so much better than everybody else. That did just think he's crazy. They're just like, oh, he's an idiot, blah, 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 blah. But then he does something amazing. They're like, whoa. <laughs> Maybe he knows something. <laughs> that I I like Yakumo a lot. I don't really... Uh, Izumi arc is like a really good closing arc for an anime like this because it's when swordsmanship's dying, which is a uh, like rival of Mutsu and Meiryu. It was supposed to be overcoming it with the bare fist technique. So it was a good way to end the arc, but I really, just because of, of events and how the arc goes, it's probably my least favorite, and it's the longest, but it's good. It is really well done. And I really love how they handle the relationships between the characters, the Musus, and their potential candidates for like marriage and whatnot, or to like pass down the lineage. And I really like watching that unfold, because they're very straightforward. They... One thing Yakumo says is that, like, everybody's wondered if he's stronger than Musashi. He's like, I am strong. I'm the strongest. <laughs> like, that's a, I'm not going to reveal how it goes because you, you need to watch it. And it, like, might not go exactly how you think. It's pretty good. Um, and what was I going to say? Yeah, just everything in this anime is so well done. It has a lot of touching moments, too. People die in this anime. Like, you might think... Oh, he punched them. They're dead. They're not dead. It just looks like he hit them. But apparently, they're hitting them with such force. These people are dead. <laughs> like he's like, if you don't want to die, get out of my way. And they like, depending on their personality, some of them are more prone to kill people than other Mutsus are. And um, one thing is, 
I like it a lot. This is something I like a lot about it because this was the like first generation anime I watched where they have like main characters going through the generations. I know JoJo came out before, but I watched JoJo after this, and I like how they do it better than JoJo. And I'm not taking anything away from JoJo. I'm not saying their way of doing it is wrong because in some situations that is how it plays out. But Mutsu and Mei Ryu, you can tell certain personality traits they get from their previous like generations like they have personality traits that Takato has some that he has like Yakumo um Izumi has some that he has that are just like Takato and Yakumo like Izumi gets the rage that Takato had Takato had when you made him mad but he also has that I want to float around like a cloud like Yakumo to not that extent not to not to the extent that Yakumo has it. Yakumo does not want to be tied down. He just wants to do what he wants to do. <laughs> but you see that in Takato too. Like they do a really good job at showing traits passing down. But th- at the same time, they have their own individual identity, which leads us to the opening song, which is called Identity, and it's so good. I like it a lot. It's super hype. And then there's the ending's really good. I didn't listen to it the first time that I watched anime because usually I'll skip the endings. But it's actually really good. I liked it too. <laughs> Surprisingly, I was like ah, but yeah, that was good. Uh, but yeah I really like how they do the personalities and how like you can tell that these are the kids of people that came before them I was looking at a family tree thing on wiki I don't know how long the manga is if it's longer because there's a lot more in the family tree like in between these people they're not like father and son even though it seems like they are in the anime they really treat it like they are father and son so I don't really know I have to do more research into that and then in Jojo the reason why I say I think I like Mutsu and Meiryu better is it's really hard to connect some of the personalities between the main characters. Like, they're all pretty good people, but they don't have, like, certain defining character traits that I feel like you can just, like, latch on to the generation before them. I guess you could be like, oh, Joseph's smart. He thinks things through. Joe is smart. He thinks things through. But these are, like, completely different people. If you put them in a lineup and you watch the anime and they didn't put any, like, familial bonds in it, like, say Joseph never met Joe, Joe Toro, and you didn't know the show was JoJo, and you didn't know the names, you just know that the main character changed, you might not know they were related at all. And Mutsu and Mei Ryu, you know these people are related. Like, you're just like watching it, and you're like, people don't know that they're related, but you know they're related. <laughs> it's such a good show, though. I gotta watch, rewatch Air Master, because like, uh, I wanna know which one I think's better, because usually I'll watch one, and I'll get to the end, and I'll be like, yeah, I like that one better. But I'm gonna watch, Air Master, before next week, I'll probably come out with another video for that. But yeah, check this anime out. It's so good. I love it so much. It's one of the first ones that I watched online when back in the day, and it's just one that's always stuck with me. And it's very... Oh, I almost missed a point. Historically, it has... Fat, it's rich in the history of like medieval Japan. It's so good. And like, it basically has the historical context added in with... A Mutsu in it. Like, the Mutsus are in there. Granted, some uh, some of those swordsmen might be super hyped up for the anime, but they're also known as that for, like, Westerners, Musashi, badass. Yagyu Jubei, he's, like, one of the most romanticized, like, anime characters from that period. Um, Sakamoto, Ryoma, Okuta, and then Toshizo. Is that his name? I don't know. Hijikata. <laughs> That's his other part of his name. Yeah, so they do that really well. And then when they get to the end of an arc, they tell you the actual history of what happened or what was written down as the actual history. But you know, now you know the actual truth that happened with the Mutsu. It's, I love it. It's so good. But yeah, thanks for watching as always. If you could, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to start putting out video game videos again. I've kind of been slacking on it because I just got back from Georgia. And I've been kind of running around a little bit, but I'm going to try to get back on it. But yeah. Thanks for watching as always. And thank you all, everybody that subscribed. I appreciate it so much. It like makes me feel good deep inside. <laughs> Knowing that people like to watch these videos.